these old beast-powered tanks, tugboats, and trucks, and many are still running today. The distinctive whine of a Detroit diesel two-stroke is unmistakable. A mechanical roar that once dominated American industry. But here's the shocking truth. How did one company build engines so indestructible that they outlasted history itself, only to fade from the spotlight when the world needed them most? The answer lies in a story of wartime innovation, mechanical genius, and the brutal reality of changing times. Detroit Diesel didn't just build engines, they built legends that refused to die even when the company that created them moved on to something completely different. In the late 1930s, diesel engines were anything but compact. Most were massive, slow-revving brutes designed for ships, locomotives, or stationary power plants. They were powerful, yes, but they were also heavy, expensive, and far too bulky for trucks, buses, or military vehicles. General Motors saw an opening. What if they could shrink diesel power into a package small and light enough to compete with gasoline engines without sacrificing the toughness that made diesels legendary? That vision became the Detroit Diesel Engine Division. What made Detroit Diesel different right from the start was their willingness to mass-produce lightweight diesels on an automotive-style assembly line. This was a radical departure. Competitors built diesels in relatively small batches, often custom-fit for specific applications. GM aimed to standardize them, to build a family of engines where components were interchangeable across models. The idea was simple but revolutionary. Design a modular diesel platform that could scale from a two-cylinder for small equipment all the way up to a 16-cylinder for ships or heavy armor. Then came the war. In 1940, as the U.S. military ramped up production, Detroit Diesel's gamble paid off in ways nobody could have predicted. The Series 71 wasn't just another engine, it was suddenly the backbone of the Allied war machine. By 1943, the factory was turning out more than 57,000 engines a year, roughly one every 10 minutes. These power plants ended up everywhere, in tanks grinding across Europe, in amphibious landing craft storming Normandy, and in Navy patrol boats chasing U-boats across the Atlantic. If you've ever seen footage of World War II vehicles in motion, odds are you were looking at a Detroit diesel at work. And what made the Series 71 truly unique wasn't just production scale, it was the engineering. Unlike four-stroke diesels, the two-stroke design fired on every revolution of the crankshaft. More firing strokes meant more power from a smaller, lighter block. And every Detroit diesel came with a Roots-type supercharger, not as a performance option, but as a requirement. The blower pushed fresh air into the cylinders while simultaneously scavenging exhaust gases, a system that gave these engines their distinctive, high-pitched whine. This scavenging process was critical to two-stroke operation, ensuring complete combustion and preventing the engine from choking on its own exhaust. It was a sound soldiers and sailors would remember for the rest of their lives. The Series 71 was a family of engines known for their 71 cubic inch displacement per cylinder, available in both inline and V-block configurations. The engines had a 4.25 inch bore and 5 inch stroke, with various cylinder configurations, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, and 24. They were commonly offered in naturally aspirated, turbocharged, and turbocharged after-cooled versions. What set Detroit Diesel apart was their obsession with field repairability. Military engines couldn't afford to fail in combat, but when they did need service, repairs had to be possible with basic tools and minimal training. The Series 71 was designed with this reality in mind. Unit injectors could be replaced individually, the supercharger was mechanically driven and virtually bulletproof, and major components were accessible without removing the engine from its application. The wartime testing ground proved that Detroit Diesel had created something special. These engines ran in desert heat, arctic cold, and everything in between. After the war, Detroit Diesel faced a challenge. How do you adapt a military engine for civilian use? 
Their answer was to expand the Series 71 family into configurations that could handle any application imaginable. The legendary Series 71 was offered in a V configuration and inline, from the compact 371 all the way up to massive 24-cylinder monsters that produced over 1,800 horsepower. The genius of the Series 71 family was its modular design. Whether you needed a 671 for public transport or a 16V71 for a tugboat, the basic architecture remained the same. Pistons, connecting rods, injectors, and countless other components were interchangeable across the entire family. This part's commonality made maintenance simpler and kept operating costs down across diverse applications. But it was the distinctive sound that made these engines legendary. The combination of the two-stroke firing pattern and the mechanical supercharger created a unique exhaust note that became known as the Screamin' Jimmy. This wasn't just noise, it was the sound of American industrial might. The Series 71 found its way into applications that seemed impossible for a single-engine family. City buses used six V71s for their combination of power and reliability in stop-and-go service. Fire departments trusted eight V71s to power their pumpers. knowing the engines would start instantly and run flawlessly under maximum load. Marine operators installed everything from 671s in fishing boats to massive 16 V71s in commercial vessels. Construction equipment was another natural home for Detroit diesel power. The engine's ability to produce maximum torque at low RPM made them perfect for bulldozers, cranes, and other heavy machinery. Unlike highway engines that needed to rev high for power, the Series 71 could lug down to barely above idle and still pull with authority. What made these engines truly special was their tolerance for abuse. Operators discovered that Series 71 engines could handle overloads, poor maintenance, and operating conditions that would destroy other engines. The robust construction and conservative tuning meant that even when pushed beyond their limits, they rarely suffered catastrophic failures. As the 1950s arrived, Detroit Diesel recognized that different applications needed different solutions. The Series 71 was perfect for heavy-duty work, but the growing highway trucking industry demanded something lighter and more fuel-efficient. Their answer was the Series 53, introduced in 1957 as Detroit's first engine designed specifically for highway use. The Series 53 maintained the two-stroke architecture that made Detroit diesel famous, but in a more compact package. The engine displaced just 53 cubic inches per cylinder, resulting in a lighter, more efficient power plant that was better suited to long-haul trucking. Despite its smaller displacement, the Series 53 could still produce impressive power, thanks to the inherent advantages of two-stroke design. Highway operators appreciated its combination of power and serviceability. The engine used the same unit injector system and mechanical simplicity that made the Series 71 legendary, but in a package that made sense for over-the-road applications. Fuel economy was respectable for the era, and the engine's reliability meant fewer roadside breakdowns. At the opposite end of the spectrum, Detroit Diesel introduced the Series 149 in 1965, a heavy-duty behemoth designed for the most demanding industrial applications. This engine was built for mining equipment, large marine vessels, and stationary power generation, where maximum power and durability were more important than weight or fuel economy. The Series 149 represented Detroit Diesel's two-stroke technology 
Taken to its logical extreme, available in configurations up to 20 cylinders, these engines could produce over 3,000 horsepower while maintaining the mechanical simplicity and field serviceability that made Detroit diesel famous. In mining applications, these engines powered massive haul trucks and drag lines that moved mountains of earth. By 1974, Detroit Diesel introduced the Series 92, marketed as fuel squeezers for their improved fuel economy compared to earlier two-stroke designs. The Series 92 incorporated lessons learned from decades of two-stroke development, featuring improved combustion chamber design and more efficient scavenging that reduced fuel consumption without sacrificing the reliability that customers expected. The Series 92 was particularly successful in V configurations, where the compact design allowed for impressive power density. Marine applications embraced it for its combination of power, reliability, and improved fuel economy. The engine's ability to handle continuous operation at maximum load made it perfect for commercial fishing vessels and workboats. But the most significant development came in 1987 with the introduction of the Series 60, Detroit Diesel's first four-stroke engine. This represented a complete departure from the two-stroke philosophy that had defined the company for nearly 50 years. The Series 60 was a clean sheet design featuring fully electronic controls through the Detroit Diesel Electronic Control System, or DDEC. This dramatically improved fuel efficiency and the ability to meet increasingly strict emission standards. The Series 60 proved that Detroit Diesel could adapt to changing market demands without losing their reputation for reliability. The engine featured advanced electronic fuel injection, precise timing control, and diagnostic capabilities that were revolutionary for their time. Fleet operators discovered that the Series 60 could deliver fuel economy that was 15 to 20% better than comparable engines, while maintaining the durability they expected from Detroit Diesel. Despite their legendary status, Detroit Diesel's two-stroke engines faced headwinds that would ultimately limit their future. The distinctive characteristics that made them beloved in certain applications became liabilities as the industry evolved toward cleaner, quieter operation. Emissions regulations were the first challenge. The two-stroke scavenging process that made these engines so powerful also meant that some fuel inevitably passed through unburned, creating visible smoke and higher emissions than four-stroke alternatives. As environmental regulations tightened throughout the 1970s and 1980s, the fundamental operating principles of two-stroke diesels made compliance increasingly difficult. Noise was another growing concern. The scream and jimmy sound that enthusiasts loved was increasingly viewed as a nuisance in urban environments. City bus operators faced pressure to reduce noise pollution and the distinctive whine of a two-stroke Detroit diesel was impossible to muffle completely. Competitors like Cummins and Caterpillar with their four-stroke technology began winning market share by offering engines that were quieter, cleaner, and often more fuel-efficient than Detroit's two-strokes. These manufacturers had focused on four-stroke development from the beginning, giving them advantages in meeting the changing demands of the market. The business landscape was changing too. General Motors had owned Detroit Diesel since its founding in 1938, but by the late 1980s, GM was looking to focus on its core automotive business. In 1988, GM spun off Detroit Diesel into a joint venture with Penske Corporation, creating Detroit Diesel Corporation. This partnership brought new management and fresh perspective to what had been a GM division. Under this new structure, Detroit Diesel achieved remarkable success, capturing approximately 33% of the North American heavy-duty truck engine market by 1993. This success was built largely on the Series 64-stroke engine, which proved that Detroit Diesel could compete effectively in the new era of electronic controls and emissions compliance. The Series 60's combination of power, fuel economy, and reliability made it a favorite among fleet operators who had previously been loyal to other brands. In 2000, Daimler Chrysler acquired Detroit Diesel Corporation, bringing the company under the umbrella of a global automotive giant. This acquisition marked the beginning of a new era focused on modern clean diesel platforms. 
The legendary two-stroke engines that had built Detroit Diesel's reputation were gradually phased out in favor of advanced four-stroke designs that could meet increasingly strict emission standards. While Detroit Diesel moved on to modern four-stroke technology, their vintage two-stroke engines refused to fade away. Today, Series 71 engines still power city buses in developing countries, commercial fishing vessels, and countless generators that provide backup power for critical facilities. These engines, some now over 50 years old, continue to demonstrate the durability that made them legendary. The collector and restoration community has embraced Detroit Diesel's vintage engines with enthusiasm that borders on obsession. Diesel shows across the country feature immaculately restored Series 71 engines, their distinctive green paint gleaming and their mechanical fuel injection systems adjusted to perfection. YouTube channels dedicated to Detroit Diesel restoration have attracted hundreds of thousands of subscribers who appreciate the mechanical artistry of these engines. Parts availability remains surprisingly good for engines that haven't been in production for decades. A thriving aftermarket has developed around Detroit Diesel two-strokes, with specialists rebuilding injectors, superchargers, and other components to original specifications. eBay has become a treasure trove for Detroit Diesel enthusiasts, where rare parts and complete engines change hands among collectors who understand their value. The sound of a properly tuned Detroit Diesel two-stroke still draws crowds at truck shows and diesel events. There's something primal about the mechanical roar of a screaming Jimmy at full throttle. A reminder of an era when engines were purely mechanical devices that could be understood and repaired by anyone with basic tools and mechanical knowledge. Marine applications have been particularly loyal to Detroit diesel two-strokes. Commercial fishermen and workboat operators continue to rebuild and maintain Series 71 and Series 92 engines because they know these power plants will start reliably and run continuously under conditions that would challenge modern engines. The simplicity of mechanical fuel injection and the absence of complex electronic systems make these engines ideal for remote marine operations. Industrial applications also keep vintage Detroit diesels alive. Mining operations, sawmills, and other heavy industries continue to operate equipment powered by two-stroke Detroit diesels because the engines simply refuse to wear out. When properly maintained, these engines can accumulate tens of thousands of hours of operation while maintaining their original power output and reliability. The cult status of Detroit diesels' vintage engines extends beyond mere nostalgia. These engines represent a philosophy of engineering that prioritized durability and serviceability over efficiency and emissions compliance. In an era of increasingly complex engines that require specialized diagnostic equipment and dealer-only repairs, the mechanical simplicity of a Detroit diesel two-stroke seems almost revolutionary. Modern diesel technicians who work on vintage Detroit diesels often express amazement at the engine's straightforward design and robust construction. Everything is accessible, serviceable, and built to last. Unit injectors can be replaced in minutes. The supercharger can be rebuilt with basic tools, and major overhauls can be performed without removing the engine from its application. In a world of silent hybrids and software updates, sometimes the loudest engine in the room is still the best one.